You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to fulfill another request today. And it came along perfectly because I've been wanting to do more classic recipes. I heard from a chef who used to work in a restaurant and he said he made lemon chicken every day. And he asked me to do it in a video. He wanted to see what I could do with lemon chicken. So I did some research and I wrote a recipe. I think I know what I'm doing as far as making this lemon chicken. I've never made it before, but it looks like it could be pretty easy to do. The first thing I need to do, however, is get my chicken breast. And if you've seen my other videos before, you know that I always buy whole chickens and then I fillet them and take off what I need. I'm not going to fillet the whole chicken today. I'm just going to fillet off the chicken breasts. The rest of the chicken I'll put aside and I'll fillet off the other meat later on. And then as I always do, I'll put the trim and the bones in the freezer and use those later for making stock. So let's start off by prepping the chicken. All right, to start my chicken here, I want to take the wings off first. So I'm cutting down right to the joint of that wing so I can just pop it out, cut through the joint, and then cut the wing off. So there's one wing off, same on the other side. In doing this, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid cutting any of the breast meat. So I'm working really close to the joint. Some people, when they fillet off a or when they cut off a chicken wing, they'll cut off some of the breast meat with it so they can turn that chicken wing into a serving piece. But I want to leave my breast meat as whole as possible. And these are going to be skinless chicken breasts, so I'm going to take the skin off. I'm not going to skin the entire chicken because, again, I'm not going to do this whole chicken. I just want the chicken breast. And if I, as I always say, rather in my videos, you don't want to attempt this without a really sharp knife. I'm using a good knife here, a boning knife, and I just put an edge on that. All right, so there's the skin removed. I'm going to cut right down alongside of the breastbone. There's a bone in here, they call it the keel. I'm going to cut right down to where the wishbone is in there. And then just work around that wishbone. And then just follow along the rib cage to separate that breast meat. from the rib cage. And then I'm there's a, a tab of meat on the bottom that I like to save, but I'm not going to save that today. I'm feeling my breast meat here to see if I have any bone in there and there's no bone that feels good. Nice and clean. So there is my breast meat. Just going to trim this up and get some of that fat off. Beautiful piece of breast meat. I would consider that to be enough to feed to feed two people. When I go to someone's house for dinner and they're having chicken breasts, if they try to put a whole chicken breast on my plate, I stop them and I say, no, I can't eat all that. That to me is two servings if you have nice big chicken breasts like that. I'm going to set that on my plate and then do the other one. So this recipe, I'm going to say, feeds two to four, depending on how big your eaters are, your dinner guests. I'm working on the other side here. I usually take the breast meat off the bird last. So this is a little bit cumbersome because I've still got the legs on there. But that's okay. Of 
free that up. There's my bird. I'm going to set this aside. I'll do the drumsticks and the thigh meat later on. And I'll save all the rest of that for trim. Once again, another chicken breast. I'm going to put that on my plate. And there they are. Two chicken breasts. To me, these are very large breasts. That's easily enough to feed four people. I'm going to make a couple of side dishes to go with this. I'm, th I'm thinking that one thing that might be good is rice with well-browned pearl onions mixed in with it. I'm also going to do some asparagus. So I bought a little bag of pearl onions. I'm going to boil these for two to three minutes in their skin. Rinse them really well with cold water to cool them down and then see if I can pop off, pop out the pearl onions that are inside that I can then brown for my rice. So there's my water now up to a full boil. And this package, by the way, is 10 ounces or 283 grams of pearl onions. Going to keep pushing those down under the water, bring that water back up to a boil, and as I said, I'm going to cook these for two to three minutes. Okay, now if all goes according to plan, I should be able to just cut off the root end and then squeeze and pop the pearl onion out from the skin, like so. That appears to be working. I mean, the thing is, I've never done it this way before. If I have to do pearl onions, I'm going to help this one along a little bit. I just sit and watch TV and then just peel the onions while I'm watching TV. I just do it by hand. It's a little bit cumbersome and tedious, but eh, I don't mind. So there are my pearl onions. I don't know which was more tedious, boiling them and popping them out of their skin or peeling them the hard way. I think next time I might just put on a DVD that I like and sit at the table and peel onions while I'm watching TV. So my next step now is I want to brown these to get some color on them so that later on when I'm ready to make my rice, I can put these in my rice. got a skillet here heating on the stove into which I am pouring some pure olive oil what I refer to as cooking olive oil and that is clarified butter that I clarified just this week as I was running out I'm not using extra virgin olive oil because it has a lower smoke point and can burn and likewise I'm not using whole butter because whole butter has milk solids in it which also burn. And I want to keep this oil relatively hot because I just want to brown the outsides kind of quickly to just give these some color. That's all I'm interested in. Because they were boiled in water, they already are pretty thoroughly cooked. I want to brown them just for color and of course that will change the flavor a little bit. So my onions are taking on a pretty good color there. These are just about done and then I'm going to leave the fat in the pan after I take out the onions because I'm going to use that to brown the chicken. All right, I removed my onions from the pan. And you can hear that pan is nice and hot again. I'm going to put my chicken in there. And what I, all I really want to do is I want to sear both sides of that chicken, give it a nice brown color. I'm not going to cook it all the way through yet because I don't need to. In a later step, I'll cook that chicken all the way through. So you can see how that chicken looks now that it's seared on one side. I'm going to sear the other side remove it from the pan and then set it aside until I'm ready to start cooking it. I also have some asparagus here that I want to prep. I've had this sitting in water so that it stays fresh. I'm going to break off the bottom 
more woody parts of the asparagus spears. And let's see, how many do I want here? Maybe um, six or seven. There's five and six. All right, so I'm going to put those in a bundle. And then I have some green onions here. So I'm going to snip off one of the fresher green leaves from the green onion and then just lightly tie that. And then I have a bundle of asparagus that's tied with a green onion. I'm going to do another one and those are going to be my two servings to go with my chicken breasts and my rice. I also have here some sprigs of fresh thyme and just working backwards down the stalks, the little branches. I'm going to pluck off some of these leaves. It's obviously easier if you have a nice long branch like that one. As far as how much time you need, maybe half a teaspoon. So what I've got right there I'm sure is more than enough. I cleaned my pan of excess fat, but I left the fond, the brown bits that were in the bottom of that pan. And I just added some more clarified butter. Now I want to put in a couple of cloves of garlic, minced. I'm going to run mine through a garlic press. These cloves aren't very big, so I'm using two. Okay. And I'm going to stir that garlic in there just a little bit so that it starts cooking. I'm going to add my thyme leaves. They always do that. They snap, crackle, and pop. And then I'm adding half a cup, which is about 120 milliliters, just shy of 120 milliliters. Uh, you can use white wine. I'm using vermouth. Reduced my heat to medium. And then what I want to do is I want to put my chicken pieces in there. And by the way, I probably failed to mention earlier that I did garnish these with, season them with salt and pepper. My heat is at medium. I want to bring that liquid up to a boil, reduce my heat, cover it, cover the pan, and let, let this chicken cook until it's cooked all the way through without being overcooked. The temperature that I'm aiming for is about 155 degrees. Then I'll take it out of the pan, cover it with foil, and let it sit for a few minutes. The, the temperature will continue to rise as the heat from the outside migrates inside. I'd like to get that up to 165 degrees inside. That's a nice safe temperature at which to cook that chicken. As I cover this pan, one thing I also want to mention is I'm going to check periodically my liquid level. I don't want to run this pan dry. I do want to have enough liquid for a sauce. So I'll be coming back periodically 
but I do have some chicken broth set aside. If I have to, I can add some chicken broth or even some water to that pan to maintain my liquid. Obviously, this wouldn't be lemon chicken without lemon, right? This is fresh lemon from my neighbor's tree. And I only need a couple tablespoons of lemon juice. That right there, I'm sure, is more than enough. And yes, that is a plane going overhead. So I'm going to set that aside. Clean up my mess here because I always get some lemon juice uh, on the side. Then what I want to do is, using a microplane grater, I want to grate off some of this zest from the lemon. I'm going to get as much off here as I can because I think when it comes to the zest, more is better. But you don't want to use the zest from several lemons. My chicken now has come up to temperature. 155 degrees. It was just above 155 degrees. I'm going to bring my heat up. That's about 68 degrees Celsius. So I move those to a plate. I'm going to cover this plate with foil. And the temperature should come up to about 165 degrees Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius by the time that outer heat migrates inside. Meanwhile, what I want to do now is I, I took my lid off and I want to thicken this sauce and I want to start cooking my asparagus because the asparagus will cook in only a few minutes. So my sauce now has thickened. I'm going to add my lemon juice, stir that in, and again reduce that a little bit. And then I'll be just about ready to finish my sauce and plate my chicken. I can tell by that sound, it's starting to make a nice, almost crackling sound rather than a sizzling sound. That indicates that that liquid has thickened. So now I'm going to put in some heavy cream and stir that all together. Add my lemon zest. And by the way, you might have noticed that that sauce is thickening already, even though it's a liquid. Well, that's because of the acid from the lemon juice. It's actually sort of curdling that cream a little bit and therefore thickening it up. Turn the heat off. That is done. I'm ready to start plating. So how I would plate this. Take one of my pieces of chicken here. Doesn't that look beautiful? Nicely browned, cooked all the way through. And then I'm going to put on that plate one of my bunches of asparagus. Then with a little bit of a ladle here. I'm going to put my, oh my gosh, look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? And just drizzle a little bit over the asparagus. And then finally, I love rice. And I think this is a nice way to serve rice with the onions in it because it gives it a little bit of color. And if you want to garnish your plate, 
I have some chopped basil here. You can use chopped parsley. You can use chives. You can use some of the chopped part of that, um, those green onions. And as I said, it wouldn't be lemon chicken without some lemon. So there's a few lemon wedges. There it is, our lemon chicken. The last step now is to see how good this tastes. I gotta tell you, I'm excited about this because I've never made lemon chicken before. So I cut off a little piece of my chicken, get some sauce on that. That is very good. The lemon does brighten the flavor up. Bit of my asparagus. Mmm. Tender, crisp, and of course my rice. That's all good. <laughs> That's all really good. So, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my lemon chicken. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.